Hello, thank you for joining me. Do you work for a company that manufactures airfoils for the aerospace or power generation industry? Did you know that Goldman Spec software is best prepared to help you address the specialized drawing callouts associated with these types of parts? My name is Ethan Centerfit, and I'm an application engineer here at Capture 3D. In this video, we're going to find out what airfoil inspection is and how it works in the Goldman Spec software. Before we get started, remember to click subscribe below so you can see more great content from the team here at Capture 3D. The GOMA airfoil inspection tools are completely customizable and come included with every installation of GOMA Inspect. In addition to an overview of these tools, we'll also find out how far we can get with a free version of the software and then how the professional version will help take this functionality to the next level. There'll also be a sneak peek into the airfoil inspection training that Capture 3D provides. Okay, let's go. For this example, I'll use a finished inspection project of an airfoil casting part. I have this project open in the free version of GOM Inspect. To answer the question, what is airfoil inspection, we'll start with the report. I'll press F5 to open presentation mode. Simply put, airfoil inspection is the analysis of two-dimensional cross-sections. In this project, the analysis needs to be redone at each one of these reference planes. But what exactly is included in this analysis? Well, that will depend on the specific drawing that you're using but airfoil inspection might include thicknesses taken at the leading and trailing edge or the maximum profile thickness. There might be overall length and width dimensions called cords. There could be angles like the stagger angle or the exit angle, which are usually between constructions on the section and datums from a nominal coordinate system. Airfoil inspection might also include the shape and location of the section. This is called profile, form, and position. There's potentially a lot of information included in an airfoil inspection, so a naming convention helps us sort and organize the results. For example, here are all of the results of thicknesses and radius from each plane, organized for plane A and plane B, etc. Alternatively, we might sort things by callout. Here's the maximum profile thickness results from each one of the planes. Here's the leading edge thickness for each one of the planes in their own table. Now that you have an overview of airfoil inspection, you might be wondering how you would start. So let's go back to the inspection workspace and take a look at just our CAD model and our base first plane. I'll select the CAD model and from the 3D toolbar, use the select all button to select the entire surface of the CAD. And now we'll create our first cross section. So I'll go to construct, section, single section. I'll create and close. So I have my nominal section of the CAD. I'll apply a measuring principle so that the software can automatically create the actual element sectioning the mesh data. Now I'll press E to look at this section by itself. I can tell I've got my section selected because of all of these arrows that highlight the section. So I'll select the section and control right click to open the I inspect wheel. And the propeller symbol will give me a list of airfoil tools. We'll start with the camber line. This is the first time the software recognizes this as an airfoil specifically. This is the backbone of the cross section. I'll say okay, and then use the same airfoil tools and choose profile edge points. This will give me my leading edge point and my trailing edge point. Selecting the section again, opening airfoil tools list for my inspect, I'll create profile edge thicknesses. This will create some dimensions at a specific location according to my drawing and I can check these dimensions for a distance and apply tolerances just like any other dimensions in the software. I'd continue on 
using a combination of the airfoil tools or standard elements from the construct and inspection menus following the input from the airfoil drawing until I had all of the information required. I'd organize this with naming conventions and create tags along the way to group this into convenient scenes that I can make reports from. When all of this is done, I've got a lot of elements created for one section. And you might recall that we need to repeat this on each one of these sections. So rather than having to redo all of this step by step, it's possible in the software to capture the entire airfoil inspection process into one function that we call a user defined inspection principle or a UDIP. This would be under the inspection menu and it's called define user defined inspection principle. But as we can see, this is restricted to the professional software. So if you haven't already, press the try professional button to request a trial license for the professional version of the software. So I'll move over to GOM Inspect Professional to see how this would look. I've got here the same CAD model and two reference planes, and I've got the same organizing tags that I can use to display all of the airfoil inspection elements that were already created. I'll select this base element or a single parent element and I'll go to the inspection menu and define user defined inspection principle. Now this is the dialog to create a UDIP and I'll confirm with the software which nominal coordinate system is the basis for my datums. I could also take a look at the parameters that were involved in all the constructions of my airfoil inspection. And I might select some of these to be adjustable according to the drawing, because they would need to be adjusted when we apply the UDIP to other planes. Now let's take a look at how we would apply the UDIP. I'll click on the next reference plane, and I'll use control right click to open the eye inspect wheel. And now that we're in the professional version, I have a symbol when I click on it, shows me the applicable UDIPs for that element type. In this case, I'll use the UDIP that we made in Capture 3D's airfoil training class. I have here an image from the drawing that guided the inspection that we made. I'll confirm the coordinate system that will provide nominal datum information. I can adjust parameters according to the drawing that are appropriate for plane HB and press OK. The software will take a moment to calculate the necessary elements and I can see all of the tags organizing the new information are automatically created. The naming convention is continued as I'd made it before and I automatically have all of the airfoil inspection done for me with just a few clicks. That's pretty cool. It's the power of the professional software. In Capture 3D's airfoil training class, we'll learn how to complete one of these airfoil inspections and create a UDIP like this. We'll also interpret technical definitions in a drawing and look at the diagrams, tables, and notes in there to make sure that we get all of the details right. We'll also find out how we can use those same airfoil inspection elements to power this smart teach functionality in our virtual measuring room so that we can create efficient and effective scanning templates. Hopefully this video has given you a better idea of how GOMS airfoil inspection tools can help address the specialized requirements of the aerospace and power generation industry. We've had an overview of the workflow which starts with a 2D section of the data and continues with the application of the airfoil tools. This workflow culminates with the creation of a UDIP which can save a lot of time. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you're eager to try these tools for yourself and continue learning more. Please don't forget to click subscribe below so that you're notified of more great content and tutorials from the team here at Capture 3D. You can also visit our website for case studies and training opportunities or even to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with our team. Thanks for watching.